Hey there, Beer Judge Nerds. We're here today to talk about the new AHA VGCP Combined Genius Score Sheet. It's a little bit of this and a little bit of that in hopes to increase your efficiency at judging and the efficiency at reading. Um, it's pretty straightforward. There's lots of bits and pieces that are maybe a little complex to start, but it's really easy to do, so we're going to go right, right to it. Um, when you pick up your new sheet, first thing that you should be thinking about is this. Right here. This is what this sheet boils directly down to. Uh, you'll see a bunch of little little hash jobbers, little little sliders. The entire point of this is to increase your ability to drudge quickly and efficiently, and also to say everything you need to say um, with a lot less words, just using little slashes. For the malt section, if you say the little slider moves, if it's middling malty, you put a slash there. Um, we can get into the entire debate about do you put a slash or an X? And I'm a slash guy because it's twice as fast as making two slashes. Um, you talk about uh, hops and fermentation. Anytime you see fermentation, all that means is how this thing was fermented, how the yeast, or what the yeast did. Uh, a lot of times it's about the esters or higher alcohols or, or anything that, that that happened. Um, when you get to the color section and the appearance, it's very straightforward. Uh, if you're doing fancy or cool stuff, meads or ciders that have a cool color to them, when you look at the thing, there's a place for other. Don't be confused. Uh, everything doesn't have to be in the realm of a reddish hue of brown or brown or reddish or lighter reddish or pale. A nice blue for you pea berry fans or, or pea, pea flower fans, depending on your pH, uh, you can do that too. Uh, mouthfeel, same standard, nothing, nothing different there. All your scores are the same. As usual, you get it out of 50. Um, the big thing that, that you need to see is that when you look at the, the sliders for the volumes or the amounts of things, uh, next to them you will see little lines. And the lines are for you, for your information to jot little things down. Um, there's also a section on uh, instruction section saying that you should talk about hops in the hop section, you should talk malt, malt the malt section, you should talk about fermentation and fermentation and, and so on. Um, to me, I much, much prefer to use all those little lines as a direct uh, soapbox to talk about this entire beer. I found that when I judge, and I've done hundreds of these now on these sheets, beer, meads, and ciders, that if you try to talk about each individual aspect on each individual line, it slows things entirely down and you end up with a lot of empty lines. If you talk about, in general, just your little first glimpse of the aroma, using your wonderful descriptive words that don't rhyme with uh, ice or ud, everything will work out perfectly fine. Um, other always means other, just write down any other things that you see. You'll also see big, um, Indicators on the thing saying inappropriate. If something's wrong in the in the aroma with hops, if something's wrong with fermentation or or, or the mouthfeel or something, the little box is inappropriate. Give that sucker a check that we know. Once you hit that thing, once you put that push that inappropriate button, and in the bottom left hand corner of your score sheet, you're going to see you're going to see a flaw a flaw chart saying um, these are the flaws for the style, and they want you to give a low, medium, or a high. Um, I only know LMH to mean something not what they mean, so I just put a check in, into it. Um, sometimes when it's extremely high or extremely low, I will indicate that, because uh, even though sometimes something's a flaw, there may be just a little itsy bitsy tiny bit of it. Um, some of us can taste some things better than others. So if I taste something, I would still write it down, but I may not you know, go into my score. Um, there's a lot put into this on who you are and what you do. Uh, when you look at it, you know, you get your standard BJCP stuff as this is made more or less towards the BJCP, but you'll also have the things, the Cicerone, um, your rank is a Cicerone. You'll have your uh, brewery, professional brewer, um, regardless if you're getting paid or not, you're still a pro. You put your, your brewery name down if, you, if you'd like. Uh, judging, I'm not sure what they mean by judging other than, you know, how many years. Uh, if you're extremely old, feel free to put it. If you're extremely young, don't put it. Uh, and everybody else, just ignore it because to me, it's just like it felt feels right to have the four lines instead of the three lines. Industry, whether you be an adult film star or an oil driller or a welder or a deep sea uh, sea bass fisherman, I guess the other industry, I actually think they mean like, are you a brewery rep or do you tell brewery reps to go and hand out umbrellas? You know, what is, what is your gig in the industry? Um, there's a whole lot of instructions. So again, when you pick this sucker up, beer meter cider, I want you completely thinking about this part right here. You bang this sucker out. You can bang this sucker out in less than a minute. Then you go back and you can talk all about it. The score sheet's pretty straightforward. Beer meter cider is a little bit different. Uh, the difference pretty much being, other than the score, the way the score changes, 
the mead and cider have places for the, the honey varietal and the apple varietal and such, which is, which is pretty straightforward. It's extremely important for these things, so much so as in uh, organizing your flight more than what it is. Uh, is it required to be, is it, is it pedalant? Is it still, is it sparkling? Uh, the level of sweetness, uh, the strength of it, all of those will be written on your pull sheet. So you indicate those on the left-hand side, just underneath your name and such, where it says your varietal of honey, your varietal of apple, whatever special ingredients you have goes at the top underneath the normal category information. Um, a key thing is if it doesn't have it listed, some of the styles require that, that you list them. Ensure that, that that's the case with the organizer of the competition and also ensure that if it's not there, write not there. Um, don't just blankly not check things. If you blankly not check things, the vast majority of people think that you did not look at it. If you say NA, meaning that not applicable, to me that means nothing was there. Or you can write not entered if you'd like. But just acknowledge the fact that, that nothing was presented to you. You can also ask if there's, if there's no details, say for especially meat or cider or even beer, if there's no specialty details on, on a fruit category, you can say, can you have somebody check in the database to ensure that this doesn't have any information? Because a lot, a lot, of, a lot of the software that, that you have, you enter your stuff into special ingredients or special whatever. Sometimes judges or, or entrants get confused and they put things into like the brewer's comments. And you never put the brewer's comments on a pull sheet because then they tell their, their mile long story and their, their novelettes about, novellas about um, this amazing product that they're doing. So always ensure that you're checking off that you, it's either it was given to you or it wasn't given to you and double check if things are actually into the, into the system just put in the wrong place. So before, before you even start writing things down, um, you really need to start getting in more efficient with your judging, everyone does, myself included, is that the second you pick up this beer and you're like, oh, beer looks good, have yourself a nice swaller, and then you think, okay, they said this is a Maybach, number one, regardless of this being a Maybach, is this a good beer? Is there anything wrong with it that pops in my head? And you say, nope, this beer's pretty fantastic. And you think, hmm, is this a Maybach? And you're like, yep, that's a pretty damn good Maybach. Then you think to yourself, hmm, any other elbows in there? Anything weird or funky? Nope, nothing weird or funky. So all of that happens within 0.5 seconds. You sip it, you taste it, in my brain, I'm good to go. And with that good to go, with experience will come, I know the general score is going to be about boop, here or so. If you have a general concept of your score, the second you smell and taste that, say, you smell it, taste it, ooh, 45, 46, 47, this sucker's good. And you start pointing out along the way. Um, as you as it warms up, character is going to come out. Uh, good and bad character is going to come out. More character will come out the less cold it is. Um, if you can see the mountains, if they're blue, you probably need to let it warm up just just a tad. But as as you as you're smelling and tasting, always go back through. Even when you're done with your score, go back through. Give another smell. Give another taste. Once she's warm, and she's any elbows come out. And don't don't sit and take time. Don't try to find stuff. Don't don't. I'm kind of getting this, and I'm kind of getting this after half an hour of, of tasting. You should be done tasting these things really really quick. Uh, and then you take your time and go through and have really good descriptors as we talked about. As you sit down and you've been kind and introduced yourself to your, to your judging partner and the pull sheets are passed out and then you start looking through the pull sheets. Uh, this won't apply to, all, to everyone. However, the more advanced judges at the table should be looking at the pull sheets. You can ask, are, have these already been structured in the order that we should judge them? If you have, say, 30 my box to judge, do you have 30 my box to judge? And you don't have to mess with the pull sheets. If you have, say, spice or vegetable, and you have a whole bunch of hot pepper meads that are just peppered throughout, literally and figuratively, then you should, you should probably ask the stewards to pull those at the very, very end. Because the last thing you want to do is have some crazy hipster ghost pepper thing, uh, you know, melt your face at beard number two and you can't smell anything the rest of the day. So just give that some thought in, for your pull sheets. Same thing with anything massively, hugely flavored. In a general, you really don't usually have to pull, push things around too much on a pull sheet, but um, make sure, one, that if this has been done before, you're good, but two, make sure the head judge is, is going through and, and come to an agreement on stuff. You don't have to order things one through 26 as some people like to do. Just make sure the things that are gonna be a, like polarizing uh, push those on the end. To be more efficient as you're judging, probably one of the, the best things you can do is not put your not put your drink down. Um, I, I, I'm lucky enough to judge in a lot of places in the world and with this newfangled technology that everybody had, the interwebs and such, uh, you get this computer in front of you and a beer and I type exceedingly fast, um, faster than I speak, <laughs> if you could believe it, and 
it's way slower for me to judge on a computer, on a tablet or something like that because I have to put this down. So when I pick this up and I have my pencil and I have my pencil in my hand and I, I take a smell, I take a sip and I'm right and I'm writing away, smell and sip, writing away, smell and sip, writing away, put it down, I'm ready to, get, I'm ready to have a conversation. Um, if you sip, set, sit down, think, touch, put it down. If, if you make everything 17 steps, you're gonna be much less efficient and you're, gonna be, you're, you're not gonna be as good of a judge. Uh, sit down, get comfortable, write everything that you have to write, be done, and then carry on. You know, there's a lot of us that like to like to laugh and goof around and stuff when we're done at the table. But at the same time, we got to make sure that, we're, that 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 the slower judges amongst us. Some people like quiet for some reason. I'm not sure, but they like quiet and um, try to be more respectful of it. Myself included, especially probably myself. And when you're when you're judging, hang on to your stuff, finish your judging, and then have a conversation. So you've had the conversation with your with your judging partner, kind of. You come to a conclusion and let's say you're off by a lot. Uh, you're off by a lot, which is a bad thing because usually within five or seven, um, if you get to be within seven points, that usually means there's some sort of disagreement and you probably should be tightened up a little bit. If you're off a lot, always ask, always ask the head judge, not the head judge at the table, leave them out of it, ask, ask the judge director, say, listen, come over here. One of you absolutely will be entirely wrong and that's okay, but just, just sort through it quickly. Sitting there and arguing and coming down, coming down five and coming up five does not do the sample justice. Same can be said, same can be said when, when you have a judge that's at giving a score, a very high score, say a 45, and you have another judge giving it a 38. 45 and 38 are still seven points. The issue is, is that if you average those 45 and 38, you can all of a sudden bring that beer from either from getting a medal or pulling it off the mini best of show table. So when you're at extreme ends, even even towards the 13s, at extreme ends, make sure you have a good conversation about why somebody's not giving this a higher score or somebody's not giving this a lower score. So if you give a beer a 20 and somebody gives it a 27, those are two very different beers. A 27 is, to me, anywhere between 26, 27, 28, and 32, 33. It, it's, a, it's a good beer that there's something specifically wrong with it. Either maybe, let's say, it's a little oxidized, or quite a bit oxidized and it's got some butter to it or it's stylistically wrong it's way too dark it's way too light it's way too bitter it's still a fine thing right if we pull the whole style thing off and just like how is that beer oh you know it's really nice to drink a lot of those fit into that that category of of 28 to 32 also 28 to 32 in my experience seems to be where a lot of middling judges put everything because how do you argue with somebody if somebody gives everything a 32 Seven point difference, I give it a 39, no issue, 32, I get a 25, so you're safe. You have this happy, this happy little safe playground word that you're playing with, right? Use your entirety of your score sheet. Use your 13s, you use your 50s. Um, don't go overly and use the 50s just to make a 50. When a 50 comes, you'll be thankful for it. When a 13 comes, you'll be thankful for the 50 that you, that, that you had before. Extremely thankful. And sometimes you have to count up to 13. Um, it's exceedingly important that you give everybody fair and honest feedback and an honest, an honest score. And an honest score is not in a, a capitulation, meaning that you don't have to be, if you're arguing about a point or two, that's fine, right? Diplomacy makes everything taste like ice cream. So all you have to do is make sure that, that you're giving the score, the, the, the beer, the best or meter side of the best chance you can have, especially on the very high end, because people are people people won't get scores, won't get to the many best to show table. If you have, especially in Meads, especially around here in St. Paul, we have an awful lot of really good mead makers. And if you're sitting, you're sitting at a table and you have something that's, that's 46, 47, 48, 44, 43, 42, is that because uh, that 48, was that because uh, that came from a different table? that somebody sent in a, a 42 because it averaged out to a 42 instead of 46 or this 38 never made it to the mini best of show table because you know you capitulated and said yeah 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 in, in the sake of moving faster and i understand i understand things things slow down sometimes i understand sometimes there's a med medical emergency i understand all of these things the issue becomes that it may take you another half an hour to finish because you, you're going a little bit, because you're going a little bit slower, ensuring that you're having these conversations on the high end and the very low end. Um, sometimes on the very low end, you can't do anything about it. You're like this is just all you want to do is not be there, right? But but you have to be there. That's your job. Tell them everything. Tell them everything. Everything's the wrong word. Give them a reference saying this is entirely wrong. Please read this. You don't have to say everything that's wrong with it, right? Something that's entirely low. Something that's entirely high. Also make sure that when you're going through things and you're looking through stuff like appearance, well, you know, this gave it a 49 because it could be a little brighter. So a little brighter, so you give something a two points out of three in a beer, 
in appearance instead of a 50 at 49 because it could be a little brighter. You know, uh, on a whole, a lot of things could be a lot of things. If you take the best beers in the world, someday they're not 50s. The very best beers in the world, they're not 50s. Sometimes that happens. However, if you give everything the, the best go of it you can, and to be open-minded that, that why am I giving this, why am I taking these points off? And to be able to argue that, or argue that, be able to discuss that with your partner. I mean, if they're, if they're incessantly low or incessantly high, I would much rather judge it's incessantly high because we can have a conversation about, you know, you're just little points. People, you'll always find that judges are much more likely to, to, to slough points than they are to, they are to come up. Just look to be more giving. You don't get extra mileage. You don't get extra, extra cash. You don't get extra hugs if, if, if you cash your points in at the end of the day. Saying, well, I could have gave this thing a 48, but I gave it a 42 because I have these five points and I need to cash them in for gas on the way home. That just doesn't work that way. When you're done, all done, all happy and everything's, everything's concluded, uh, in, your top, in your top right of your score sheet, you'll see you know, the ordinal position, which to me, I've never, ever, ever cared about. Um, when you put ordinal position on any sort of score sheet, the only thing I'd give somebody a chance to do is yell at you because if their beer meter cider was an eighth out of eight, they'll say, well, your palate fatigue is one out of eight. It's just an indication that has been left over. It's on the score sheet. It'll be filled out. Um, when you fill it out, you don't have to fill out the out of. A lot of this stage judging is that you just continue to judge until all of them are, are done. The faster tables will judge faster than the slower tables. So you may have seven or eight or nine, and another table will have three. So when you put, you know, four out of, just put your slash, four out of, and then when you're done, you get seven, eight, nine, whatever, then you go back and rewrite seven, eight, or nine. Um, your consensus score at the end that you'll see is not your average, not necessarily your average. If you have a middling beer of 23, 24, 25, 26, that's not going to many best to show, feel free to take your average and write it right there. Uh, your consensus score basically is the score that you've agreed to give something. Um, you'll also see a checkbox for mini best to show, which is important because you check that mini best to show people can say Oh, you know, I went to the mini best to show it indicates that the beer went to the mini best to show and at the same time As I'm judging your stuff at the mini best to show so let's say we've had five tables of Our favorite spice or vegetable, which means I'm gonna get anywhere between so from five tables anywhere between You know 15 to 5 5 to 15 beers. It never ever is five beers. Everybody sends two to three um, so you, especially, especially at second round in HC, you get a lot of good stuff. So you're sitting here and my mini best to show at 15 beers, 15 meats, 15 ciders, however, however she shakes up. They're going to come from 15 different tables with 15, with, with, with a whole bunch of different sets of pallets. When, when they sit down in front of, when they sit down in front of me, I don't ask what the score is. I don't care what the score is that they gave before. You put 15, 15 things in front of me and we choose, we choose the top three. Um, so what's happened, what's happened regularly is that one table is very stingy with their points and a beer that ranked 32 on their table is absolutely, or mead that ranked 32 on their table is absolutely fantastic. And something that got pushed on that was, you know, with a judge that was a little more giving, gave it a 42, that beer, let's say, got, got third place. So the consensus score can be the agreed upon score. So if you look at the, the cover sheets of the original BGCP, uh, cover sheets, which these do not have. We don't have cover sheets because the entire purpose is that we did away with the paperwork. The cover sheet is is the actual score sheet for the consensus score. So this consensus score can be can be the agreed upon score, because coming from all these different tables, you're never ever ever going to be able to have the best beer, be, meat or cider, be first, second, or third point wise. Or if you do, it's rare. It's rare. So what you want to do is ensure that you're saying. The points that you got, the quality is there, so this score is this, and second place is this, and third place is this. Um, that's not how required. It's not how every competition does it. That's how I do it. That way I don't have to have a conversation with, with every single person that has a fantastic whatever with, yes, you did a fantastic job, you got a 40, and your neighbor Doug got a 35, and he placed and you did not, why is that so? It's, it, it's, it's the way the world works. The scores only mean so much until they get to the mini best of show table and then to the best of show table scores to throw out the window because you have styles all across the way. So when you come to a consensus score, make sure that the, what the competition wants is that you're doing either averages, just a flat average, because some, some, some just want just a flat average, which it's, it's their choice. Others is a, is a straight consensus. So what I always say to do is that for whatever, whatever score sheets or, go, or whatever 
beers or meads or ciders are going to the best of show or mini best of show, all of those score sheets go with those beers. So let's, for the example I gave, 15, 15 spice or vegetables show up. I have those 15 score sheets. My steward has those 15 score sheets. My lovely steward has those 15 score sheets next to him and he can do, he hangs on to those. So once we get one, two, and three, we, we review the scores of those and we ensure that they point out one, two, and three because this is the consensus score. This is our agreed upon score. This is our assigned score. This is not our average score. We want to do that to reflect that these one, two, and three, and this is this is the order that, that we want them to come in. So now that you're all finished and everybody's happy and everything's done, you should probably go all the way back to the beginning to ensure that you know what these things look like. When you sit down at first round, when you sit down at any competition, this should not be the first time you see these things. If it is, you will slow me down. And frankly, that's the most important worry that I have, is that if every judge thought about being much more selfish in the fact that if I judge efficiently and I judge well, I can get the lunch sooner and everybody else can get the lunch sooner too. So if all of us pitch in and judge much more efficiently and happily, much more selfishly, we'll all be much better judges all around. So you should go to the BGCP website, which we have these score sheets displayed with the rest of the score sheets that, you, that, you've, that you've known from before, but you can go and get these ones and practice. And practice, practice, practice. I would highly suggest judging, judging the, uh, the same beer, or the same mead, or the same cider directly right next to one with the old score sheet. I mean, the checklist score sheet, um, if you have any of those left over, you literally can just take them and make kindling with them or scratch paper and then kindling. Or, I mean, if you can make kindling out of, out of paper, you're kind of working backwards. So maybe we should say um, you can make some sort of origami. Ooh, like those hanging origami things. So those would be fantastic. So if you go to the BGCP website, you'll find these and you should be studying them and you should be using them so you get acquainted with them and find out your own way, find your own path, right? The coolest thing about these ones is that this is basically a choose your own adventure. And the choose your own adventure part is that this is how I'm describing that I like to fill these out. Um, it may be faster for you to fill them out a different way or to think about it a different way, or you really want, maybe you really want to fill out everything about hops on this line. And maybe you really want to fill out everything about other on this line. And maybe you want to talk about the fermentation a lot more. Um, however you want to do it, there's no wrong way to fill these out other than incompletely. As long as you've talked about everything, as long as you've covered your score sheet, and there's, there's, there's not a, a, a load of blank space, do it how you do it. Make, your, make, make it quick, make it efficient. So when you sit down and it's basically just a rubber stamp. Uh, on a side note, I would highly, highly suggest that everyone prints out their own little judging labels with their name and their, their BGCP number or just even just their name or a stamp that says, you know, Taco John, if that's your name, or Taco Janos, or how, whatever your name is, because, you know, everybody loves tacos, that you can move things along and get things moving. Because there's nothing worse than sitting there for five minutes um, watching somebody filigree their name into the score sheet uh, that we all sh already should be judging it, right? So be efficient, be quick, be thorough, and just, you know, don't annoy people. That's pretty much good in life. Then if everybody does it to everybody, then you know we're gonna be a lot farther ahead in the world than we are now. And I will see you at lunch.